Hi everyone, Julie is here. I'm glad to see in my channel you had eyes of Russian. Everything in today's video will be Russian, right? Alexei Maximovich Peshkov, who is better known as Maxim Gorky. So, let's begin. We continue our review of Russian writers. Many people wonder why Alexei Peshkov wrote and up sending, but in fact is quite normal. Moreover, the writer had two of them. In addition, mainly in social networks, um, hiding under nicknames and no one surprised. So, guys, I invite you to plunge into the biography of the famous Russian writers that such additions that you definitely will not find on the open spaces English language Wikipedia. In addition, life and work of the great peoples is always extremely interesting. Maxim Gorky was a Russian writer and political activist. He was nominated five times for a Nobel Prize in Literature. Before his success as an author, he traveled widely across the Russian Empire, changing jobs frequently, experiences which would later influence his writing. Born March 28, 1868, Gorky himself, right up to old age, believed that he was born in 1969. In 1919, his 50th jubilee was widely celebrated in Petrograd. In immigration, he spent a total of more than 18 years, including 15 years in Italy, while not mastering any foreign language. Gorky was the most published Soviet writer in the USSR. The total circulation of 3,556 publications amounted to 242,621 million copies. If we take into account all Russian writers, then Gorky is second only to Tolstoy and Pushkin. Alexei Maximovich Peshkov was born in the town of Kanavina, which at the time was located in the Nizhny Novgorod province. The boy just appeared in the family of the carpenter Maxim Peshkov. According to another version, the biological father of the writer was the manager of the Astrahan office. At the age of three, Alosha Peshkov fell ill cholera, but was able to recover, but his father, Maxim Pishkov, soon died. Alasha hardly remembered his parent, but the stories of his relatives about him left a deep mark. Even the pseudonym Maxim Gorky was taken by him in 1892 in memory of Maxim Sevastyevich. Alexei's mother was named Varvara Vasilyevna from a bourgeois family. Widowed early, she remarried. Maxim's grandmother, Akulina Ivanovna, replaced the boy's parents. In his autobiography, Peshkov noted that as a child he didn't like to go to church, but his grandfather forced him to go to church by force, while neither confession nor communion was mentioned at all. At school, Peshkov was considered a difficult teenager. Gorky retained an atheistic worldview for his entire life. Having already become a venerable writer, he said, God is invented and badly invented in order to straighten the power of men over people and he only needs a man-master and the working people he is an obvious enemy. After a domestic quarrel with his stepfather, whom Alexei almost tapped to death for cruel treatment of his mother, Pishkov returned back to his grandfather Kashirin, who by that time was completely ruined. For a while the boy's school began the street, where he spent time in the company of teenagers deprived of parental supervision, got the nickname Bashlik there. He briefly studied at a primary parish school for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. After another complaint from classmates, Alexei soon dropped out of school. 
He didn't receive a secondary education. He did not have documents for admission to the university. At the same time, Pishkov possessed a strong will to learn, and according to the testimony of his grandfather, Kashirin, a horse memory. Gorky read a lot. Among his favorite authors were Stendhal, Honoré de Balzac, and Gustav Flaubert. However, by age of 30, Pishkov was writing semi-literate with a mass of spelling and punctuation errors, which were corrected for a long time by his wife Ekaterina, a professional proofreader. From childhood, Alexei was a pyromaniac. He was extremely fond of watching the fire bewitchingly burn. In Kazan, on a high bank above the Volga, behind the scenes of the Trinity Fyodorovsky Monastery, 19 years old Pishkov, in an attack of youthful depression, attempts suicide by shooting himself along with a gun. A few days later, Pishkov repeated the suicide attempt in the hospital, where he collared with a professor of medicine, suddenly grabbed a large bottle of floral hydrate and took several sips, after which he was saved from death for the second time by gastric lavage. In October 1898, Pishkov was arrested for the first time and imprisoned in the Nizhny Novgorod prison. He changed a huge number of jobs. He had experience of working as a loader, carpenter, dyer, baker, barge hull, builder, watchman, reporter and recruited to the back of oil fields. The writer later called this work the hardest of all that fell to his lot. In 1893, 25 year old Alexei Pishkov entered into his first and marriage marriage with the midwife Olga Yulivna Kamenska. Alexei parted with Kamenska already in 1894. A turning point in relations came after Olga fell asleep while reading the novel Old Woman is Real. She had just written. Peshkov moved to Samara, where he became a professional journalist and began to earn his living with articles, feuilletons, and essays under the pseudonym Egudil Hlamida. In just two incomplete years, in the Samara newspaper, Peshkov published about 500 literary works, which was an unthinkable performance for the then publicist in Russia. In 1896, Gorky married the daughter of a bankrupt landowner, yesterday schoolgirl, proofreader of the Samara newspaper Ekaterina Volzhina. In July 21, 1897, his first born son Maxim was born in Crimea, Ukraine. Gorky met Chekhov and Tolstoy personally. A couple of months after the books were published, the writer, whose name was already well known, was again arrested in Nizhny. He publicly opposed the Tsarist regime and was arrested many times. Gorky befriended many revolutionaries and became a personal friend of Vladimir Lenin after they met in 1902. In September 1902, Gorky, who had already received world fame and substantial fees with his wife Ekaterina Pavlovna and children Maxim and Katya, who were reborn in 1901, settled in the rented 11th rooms of the Nizhny Novgorod, House of Baron. The closest friend of Fyodor Shalapin, who also rented an apartment in the house of Baron, actually participated in the life of the Gorky family in the city. At the turn of the 1920s, a status beautiful and successful woman appeared in Gorky's life. During the performance after the third act, Chekhov introduced Gorky to the famous Moscow actress Maria Andreeva, becomes a civilian wife and literary secretary of Gorky. When Gorky and Andreeva were in the United States, Gorky's five-year-old daughter Katya dies from sudden meningitis in Nizhny Novgorod. Gorky wrote a consoling letter from America to his abandoned wife, in which he demanded to take care of his remaining son. 
of the spouses by mutual agreement decided to leave Gorky's and register it relationship with Andreeva continued until 1919, while the divorce from his first wife was not formalized by the writer. Officially, Peshkova remained his wife until the end of her life, and this was not just a formality. After seven years of emigration, having arrived in the USSR from Italy to celebrate his 60th birthday, Gorky stopped in Moscow on Tverskaya Street in the apartment of Ekaterina Peshkova, who then headed the Committee for Assistance to Political Prisoners, the only legal human rights organization in the USSR. Whether Maxim Gorky and his wife remained friends and corresponded until the end of their release. In June 1936, at the funeral of Gorky, Katerina Pavlovna was present as his lawful, universally recognized widow, to whom Stalin personally expressed condolences. In the biographies of Gorky, not a word about the fact that Andreeva was the actual wife of Gorky. She is mentioned only once as an actress of the Moscow Art Theatre. Alexei Maximovich plans Arrows to create a new large-scale theatrical project in St. Petersburg on Litany Prospect. However, for a number of reasons, both creative and organization of the new theatre in St. Petersburg was never created. Maxim Gorky showed himself talently as a publisher as well. From 1902 to 1921, he headed three large publishing houses, Knowledge, Paris and World Literature. Gorky made a revolution in the policy of fees, Knowledge, paid a fee of 300 rubles for an author she of 40,000 characters. At the beginning of the 20th century, a shot of vodka cost 3 kopecks, a loaf of bread 2 kopecks. In addition to high fees, Gorky introduced a new practice of monthly advances, thanks to which the writers seemed to find themselves on the staff and began to receive salaries from the publishing house. An innovation for Russian book publishing was royalties from foreign publishing houses and theaters. Since December 1905, on the initiative of Gorky, a special publishing house for Russian authors were established abroad. Gorky and Andreeva stayed in America until September. The goal is to raise funds for the Bolsheviks' treasury to prepare for the revolution in Russia. Soon Gorky made a mad a pleasant impression on Mark Twain. In October 1906, due to tuberculosis, Gorky and his partner settled in Italy. In 1970, Gorky coolly accepted the February and later the October Revolution, did a lot of public and human rights work, criticized the methods of the Bolsheviks, condemned their attitude towards the old intelligentsia, saved a number of its representatives from Bolshevik repression and famine. He stood up for the deposed Romanovs, over whom spontaneously gathering crowds scoffed everywhere. Not finding a suitable platform for expressing his independent position, Gorky on May 1, uh, 1917, began publishing the newspaper Nova Zizn. After the victory of October, the revolution authorities no longer needed a free press, and on July 1918, the newspaper Nova Zizn was closed. The cooling of material relations between Gorky and Andreeva took place in 1919, not only because of the increasingly sharply manifest political differences, the personal break with Andreeva was not caused by frivolous flirting with Boldberg, but by Gorky's long-term patient for Varvara. Vasilyevna had a daughter from him, Nina. The fact of biological paternity of Gorky was considered indisputable throughout her life and the ballerina Nina Tikhovna herself. His mistress in 1920s, after all, Bodberg Maria Ignatievna was a baroness. She became the last muse of the writer. Bodberg translated Gorky's works into English edited his manuscripts. 
According to the memories of Korny Chukovsky, the last patient of Gorky, Maria Budberg, attracted the writer not so much with her beauty as with her incredible sexual attraction. The writer lived with this woman for 30 years. The marriage, like the previous one, was unregistered. The last wife of Maxim Gorky was 24 years younger than him, and all her acquaintances were aware that she was spinning novels on the side. They parted a few years before the death of the writer in 1933. One of the lovers of the Gorky's wife was the English science fiction writer Herbert Wells, to whom she left immediately after the death of her de facto spouse. In the Soviet Union, it was forbidden to write about her relationship with Gorky. There is a great chance that Marie Bodberg, who had a reputation as an adventurer and an ambiguously collaborated with the NKVD, could be a double agent and also work for British intelligence. As good as Gorky was in love affairs, so Gorky was a skillful chess player. Chess games among his girls are also known. Gorky introduced the game of chess into many of his works as an element of the plot. After the assassination attempt on Lenin in August 1918, the relationship between Gorky and Lenin, which had previously been darkened by a number of quarrels, strengthened again. Andreeva took with her a new lawyer, went to Germany, the future permanent secretary of the writer, with whom she settled in Berlin, while Gorky himself with his son and daughter-in-law settled outside the city. The lover, with the assistance of Andreeva, became the de facto publisher of Gorky's work abroad and intermediary in the writer's relationship with Russian magazines and publishing houses. As a result, Andreeva and Kruchkov were able to completely control Gorky's spending of his considerable funds. Together with Shklovsky and Khodasevich, Gorky began his only publishing project in Europe the Besetta magazine, but the Politburo banned the circulation of the magazine in the USSR. In accordance with the argument signed by Gorky in 1922, with the USSR trade mission in Germany and calculated for a period until 1927, where writer lost the right, both independently and through others, to publish his work in Russia, both in Russia and abroad. In May 1928, at the invitation of the Soviet government and Stalin personally, for the first time in seven years after leaving for immigration, Gorky arrived in the USSR. In 1931, the Soviet government provided Gorky with the mention of Rybushinsky on Mala and Kitska Street by the Soviet government for permanent residence in Moscow, which in 1965 became the museum apartment of Gorky in Moscow. Gorky lived in two houses, spending winter and autumn in Sorrento at the second Soviet villa and finally returned to USSR on May 9, 1933. At the same time, Stalin promised Gorky that he would continue to be able to spend the winter in Italy, but the writer instead was provided with a large dacha in Crimea, where he stayed during the cold season. Gorky was no longer allowed to go to Italy. In the early 1930s, Gorky was waiting for a Nobel Prize in Literature and counted on it, being nominated five times. Gorky's competitors were Ivan Shmilov, Dmitry Mirishkovsky, and Ivan Bunin. In 1933, Bunin received the prize, and Gorky's hopes the status word recognition collapsed. Gorky strongly supported a force in getting a low paste, making homosexuality a criminal offense. His attitude was colored by the fact that some members of the Nazi Sturmabteilung were homosexual. The phrase exterminate all homosexuals and fascism will vanish is often attributed to him. On May 11, 1934, Having caught a cold after spending the night on the cold ground in the open air at Dacia in Gorky near Moscow, 
Gorky's son Maxim Pishkov unexpectedly dies of pneumonia. On the night his son was dying, Gorky, on the first floor of his dachi in Gorky, discussed with Professor Spiransky the achievements and prospects of the Institute of Experimental Medicine and the problem of immortality, which he considered arrogant and achievable for sins. When at three o'clock in the morning the interlocutors were informed about Maxim's death, Gorky objected. This is no longer a topic, and continued to enthusiastically theories about immortality. Later, Gorky returned by train, poor condition, to Moscow, from a vacation from Tsili. From the station, he went to his residence on Mala Nikitska Street to see his granddaughter, Martha and Daria, who at that time had the flu. The virus was transmitted to the grandfather the next day, after visiting his son at the Novodzevich Cemetery, Gorky caught a cold in the cold, windy weather and fell ill, laying Gorky for three weeks. On June 18, at about 11 a.m., Maxim Gorky died in Gorky at the age of 69. His home nurse sleeper recalled the far well strong, healthy hugs and the passionate, far from fraternal kiss of the already dying Gorky. Some publications accused Stalin of Gorky's death. Most likely such an opinion was based on the fact that Gorky posed a serious danger to the current government. He was in correspondence with European writers. He was visited by foreigners. They offended complained to him. He formed public opinion. However, no official evidence of Stalin's involvement in the death of Maxim Gorky has been found. Monuments to Maxim Gorky have been installed in many cities of Russia, Ukraine and other countries. In 2018, on the 150th anniversary of the writer's birthday, the Bank of Russia issued a commemorative silver coin with a face value of two rubles in the series Outstanding Personalities in Russia. That's all. The list of books is in front of you. Wasn't it interesting? Hmm? Write in the comments if you hear about this Russian writer and what fact from his biography you especially remember. Well, I say so much, but you got a lot of stuff to talk about. Subscribe to my channel, mark the bell in order not to miss new release and push the button if you like this video. See you in the next thematic video.